Hello, 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 everybody. It's your boy J Malls of J Malls Gaming here today with my impressions, my reactions, my thoughts on The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I just recorded my reaction to the entire Nintendo Direct, but I'm not using it because I accidentally had Genshin Impact in the background, so the music was just there. Yeah, that was a bit of a thing, but hey, this is the thing I'm most looking forward to. Now, actually, a lot to, you know, react to when it comes to this trailer. A lot of imagery, a lot of glyphs. I'm sure, like, some Lord nerds will be able to, like, break this down, like, piecemeal and, like, tell you something about it. Like, maybe this is a new villain that will be fleshed out over the course of the game. But I come away from this trailer with a lot of questions. Questions more than anything. I wonder a lot about the design choices that they have made with this game. I'm not saying that they are bad. Do not get me wrong on that. I am not saying that they are bad. I am just wondering how they're going to execute on a lot of these design philosophies, these design principles. Let me showcase one, like, key example of what I'm talking about here. So, as we know from the last trailer, and this trailer... The world of Hyrule, Four Tears of the Kingdom, will be broken up into two distinct parts. You have the regular land of Hyrule down below, that's all damaged, torn apart, sundered even. And then you have this sky continent area up above, with a bunch of little islands just up in the sky, kind of like Skyward Sword. My question for them, my question for Nintendo, is... With Breath of the Wild, one of the biggest selling points, one of the things that kept me playing the game, was the sense of openness and non-linearity that Breath of the Wild had at its disposal. I, there was a lot of player agency, a lot of freedom of choice when it comes to how do you want to tackle this open world in Breath of the Wild. With Tears of the Kingdom, do you see what I'm seeing here? A lot of these islands are only connected by, say, like, one point of, like, land between them. You can see it here. If I want to go down from here to up here, I kind of have to go up here unless I have some kind of tool in the sandbox of, Breath of Tears of the Kingdom that allows me to traverse this. But... I, we don't, that hasn't been confirmed yet. There's a lot of free-falling and there's a glider we can use at least in the regular part of Hyrule that's all torn apart. Up here, though, I don't know what their gameplay is. How do we navigate up here? Because that, to me, will be a pivotal design choice in terms of how engaging and how fun is, is Tears of the Kingdom to explore. Does it retain that sense of openness, that almost serene feeling that Breath of the Wild had? They may not be going for that. They may be going for a more linear feel for up here, and have more linear sections, but the dun dungeons up here. Maybe that's a game here, and have that sense of exploration down below. But is Hyrule any that much different down below? It's, there's a lot of questions I have. What are they going to do with the weapon durability? What are they going to do with stamina? Because especially later on in this trailer, we'll see here in a second... There's a lot of verticality down here in Hyrule, as you can see right here. Going up. And going and climbing up these roots on like there's a lot of verticality here, as you can see. Like these are areas I can assume you explore down here. But we got all the way up here. So I'm assuming we're gonna be there's a lot of verticality, which means there's gonna be a lot of climbing. Are we going to have the same climbing system? The same stamina management system from the last game? Is that... Are they going to do that for a sequel? Are, are they really going to do that? Because it was polarizing enough in that game, but now you're asking players to possibly do that for a second game. Now, I liked the stamina system from the original game. I thought getting more stamina over the course of the game was a nice sense of progression. But... But... It would have been nice to have more base stamina. I And I don't even see a stamina bar here. So are they just going to say, screw it, you have infinite stamina? Like, what's the mechanic for navigating here? 
That's my main question. Because this could be really fun, could be really engaging, but we just have a lot of I just have a lot of questions in terms of how they're gonna execute here. Because the UI seems very minimalistic. We haven't actually seen any of any of it. But again, as you can see here, with the land of Hyrule. The land of Hyrule, it's very torn apart compared to what it was in Breath of the Wild. A lot more craters, a lot more ravines, caverns. A lot of floating islands and like these floating little areas over here. You can see off in the distance, you have this like almost Celestia from Genshin area up here in the sky. That you can only see the silhouette of. There's a lot of craters down here. What's the sense of verticality? How much are we going to be exploring this? And is this the same map from Breath of the Wild, just heavily altered? Is that the direction they're going to go for? In which case, yes, it's heavily altered, but is it altered enough to make the world feel new and fresh for returning players? How are they going to execute on those design ideas? That's just the overall question that I have going into, going into Tears of the Kingdom. What are the changes that they have possibly made from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom? Or have they made any changes at all? What's the overall map looking like? What's it like to explore the map? What's the stamina like? What's the weapon durability system like? What's the story like? Are the dungeons any better? Are we going to retain that same similar flow and style from Breath of the Wild? I didn't mind it, but I would like some more stylized dungeons instead of the same aesthetic over and over again. There's a lot of questions we have going into this game. And this trailer just felt like it was more an announcement for the release date instead of showcasing a lot of these questions that the community probably has. So yeah, I would say if you really enjoyed Breath of the Wild, honestly, I can't even make a recommendation here. For the simple reason of the Sky Continent. Because if you didn't enjoy Breath of the Wild, I would assume you're not going to enjoy this game all that much. Or you might prefer the sky area here that's more linear in design, at least just from what it looks like. But if you enjoyed Breath of the Wild, you might not enjoy this bit, depending upon how they executed it. Upon like what, what are the tools in the sandbox here? We had magnetism, we had those bombs, we had time stopping in the original game. If we had that Sheikah Slate again, what are our abilities? I'm assuming we're going to have the ones from the last game, but what new tools, what new toys do we have to play around with? That's really the question I just come away from this trailer with. What do we have at our disposal to interact with this new world and this new open world design philosophy compared to the base game of Breath of the Wild? I'm really interested to see where they go from here and what the decision making is. Because I'll probably enjoy this game regardless. I'm just really curious as to how they reacted to the feedback given to them from Breath of the Wild. So I'm going to call the video there. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure making the video. Leave a comment down below with what change, what singular change would you most like to see for the formula of Breath of the Wild going from Breath of the Wild to this game, Tears of the Kingdom? Let me know. For me... It would probably be more, you, more ways to navigate the world. Give me more gliders like we saw in this trailer. Just, and give me like a grapple hook or something like that. Just more ways to interact, especially with the Sky Continent area. Because it could be like Skyward Sword. Maybe. And maybe we get like one of those giant birds to fly around with. We don't know. They haven't really shown us all that much. And while you're down there, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe out there, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.